Здравствуйте, уважаемые друзья. Сегодня 28 января 2022 года. Я продолжаю читать книгу джунглей Ридерда Киплинга, великого английского писателя и поэта, лауреата Нобелевской премии в области литературы. Это третья часть «Каз Хантинг. Охота К». His spots are the joy of the leopard. His horns are the buffalo's pride. Be clean, for the strength of the hunter is known by the gloss of his hide. If ye find that the bullock can toss you, or the heavy-browed sapho uh, can go, ye need not stop work to inform us We know it ten seasons before. Oppress not the cubs of the stranger, but hail them as sister and brother. For though they are little and fubsy, it may be the bear is their mother. There is none like to me, says the cub, in, in the pride of his earliest kill. But the jungle is large, and the cub... He is small. Let him think and be still. Maxims of Baloo. All that is told what happened some time before Mowgli was turned out of the Sioni world wolf pack or revenge himself on Shere Khan the tiger. The big, serious old brown bear was delighted to have so quick a pupil, for the young wolves will only learn as much of the law of the jungle as applies to their own pack and tribe and run away as soon as they can repeat the hunting verse. Feet that make no noise, eyes that can see in the dark, Ears they can, that can hear the winds in their layers and sharp white teeth, all these things are the marks of our brothers except Tabakwi, the jackal, and the hyena, who we hate. But Mowgli, as a man cub, had to learn a great deal more than this. Sometimes Bagheera, the black panther, would come lounging through the jungle to see how his pet was getting on and uh, would purr with his head against a tree while Mowgli recite the day's lesson to Baloo. The boy could climb almost all, as well as he could swim and swim almost as well as he could run. So Baloo, the teacher of the law, taught him the wood and water laws. How to tell a rotten branch from a sound one, how to speak politely to the wild bees when he came upon a hive of them 50 feet above ground. What to say to Meng, the bat, when he dis disturbed him in the branches at midday, and how to warn the water snakes in the pools before he splashed down among them. None of the jungle people like being disturbed, and all are very ready to fly at an intruder. Then, too, Mowgli was taught the stranger hunting call which must be repeated aloud till it is answered. Wherever one of the jungle people hunts outside his own grounds. It means translated. Give me leave to hunt here because I am hungry. And the answer is, hunt then for food, but not for pleasure. All this will show you how much Mowgli had to learn by heart, and he grew very tired of saying 
the same thing over a hundred times. But as Balu said to Bagheera one day when Mowgli had been cuffed and run off in a temper, a man cub is a man cub and he must learn all the law of the jungle. But think how small he is, said the Black Panther, who would have spoiled Mowgli if he had had his own way. How can his little head carry all the long talk? Is there anything in the jungle too little to be killed? No. That is why I teach him these things. And that is why I hit him very softly when he forgets. Softly? What does thou know of softness, old iron feet? Bagheera granted. His face is all bruised today by thy softness. Oh. Better he should be bruised from head to foot by me who love him than that he should come to harm through ignorance, Baloo answered very earnestly. I am now teaching him the master words of the jungle that shall protect him with the birds and the snake people and all that hunt on four feet except his own pack. He can now claim protection if he will only remember the words from all in the jungle. Is not that worth a little beating? Well, look to it then that thou dost not kill the man cub. He is no tree trunk to sharpen thy blunt claws upon. But what are those master words? I am more likely to give help than to ask it. Bagheera stretched out one paw and admired the steel blue reaping chisel talons at the end of it. Still, I should like to know. I will call Mowgli and he shall say them, if he will. Come, little brother. My head is ringing like a bee tree, said a sullen little voice over their heads. And Mowgli slid down a tree trunk, very angry and indignant, adding as uh, he reached the ground. I come for Bagheera and not for thee, fat old Baloo. That is all one to me, said Baloo, though he was hurt and grieved. Tell Bagheera then the master words of the jungle that I have taught the this day master words for which people said mowgli delighted to show off the jungle has many tongues i know them all a little though knowest but not much see or bagheera they never thank their teacher not one small wolfing has ever come back to thank old Baloo for his teachings. Say the word for the hunting people, then great scholar. We be of one blood, ye and I, said Mowgli, giving the words the bare accent which all the hunting people use. Good. Now for the birds. Mowgli repeated with the kite's whistle at the end of the sentence. Now for the snake people, said Bagheera. The answer was perfectly indescribable hiss, and Mowgli kicked up his feet behind, clapped his hands together to applaud himself, and jumped on Bagheera's on to Bagheera's back, where he sat sideways, drumming with his heels 
on the glossy skin and making the worst faces he could think of at Baloo. There, there, that was worth a little bruise, said the brown bear tenderly. Some day thou wilt remember me. Then he turned aside to tell Bagheera how he had begged the master words from Hathi, the wild elephant, who knows all about these things, and how Hathi had make Mowgli down to a pool to get the snake word from a water snake, because Baloo could not pronounce it and how Mowgli was now reasonably safe against all accidents in the jungle, because neither snake, bird, nor beast would hurt him. No one then is to be, fre is to be feared, Baloo would up, wound up, patting his big furry stomach with pride. Except his own tribe, said Bagheera under his breath, and then aloud to Mowgli. Have a care for my ribs, little brother. What is all this dancing up and down? Mowgli had been trying to make himself heard by pulling at Bagheera's shoulder fur and kicking hard. When the two listened to him, he was shouting at the top of his voice. And so I shall have a tribe of my own and lead them through the branches all day long. What is this new folly, little dreamer of dreams, said Bagheera. Yes, and throw branches and dirt at old Baloo, Mowgli went on. They have promised me this. Ah! Woof! Baloo's big paw scooped Mowgli off Bagheera's back, and as the boy lay between the big four paws, he could see the bear was angry. Mowgli, said Baloo, thou hast been talking with the bandalog, the monkey people. Mowgli looked at Bagheera to see if the panther was angry too, and Bagheera's eyes were as hard as jade stones. Thou hast been with the monkey people, the grey apes, the people without a law, the eaters of everything. That is great shame. When Baloo hurt my head, said Mowgli, he was still on his back. I went away, and they, the grey apes came down from the trees and had pity on me. No one else cared. He snuffed a little. The pity of the monkey people, Baloo snorted. The stillness of the mountain stream, the cool of the summer sun, and then men come. And then, and then, they gave me nuts and pleasant things to eat. And they, they carried me in their arms up to the top of the trees and said I was their blood brother, except that I had no tail and should be their leader some day. They have no leader, said Bagheera. They lie. They have always lied. They were very kind and bade me come again. Why have I never been taken among the monkey people? They stand on their feet as I do. They do not hit me with hard paws. They play all day. Let me get up, bad Baloo. Let me up. I will play with them again. Listen. Man cub, said the bear, and his voice rumbled like thunder on a hot night. I have taught thee all the law of the jungle for all the peoples of the jungle, except the monkey folk 
who live in the trees. They have no law. They are outcasts. They have no speech of their own, but use the stolen words which they overhear when they listen and peep and wait up above the branches. Their way is not our way. They are without leaders. They have no remembrance. They boast and chatter and pretend that they are a great people about to go great affairs in the jungle, to do great affairs in the jungle. But the falling of a nut turns their minds to laughter and all is forgotten. We of the jungle have no dealings with them. We do not drink where the monkeys drink. We do not go where the monkeys go. We do not hunt where they hunt. We do not die where they die. Hast thou ever heard me speak of the bundle log till today? No, said Mowgli in a whisper. But the forest was very still now. Baloo had finished. The jungle people put them out of their mouths and out of their minds. There are very many evil, dirty, shameless, and they desire, if they have any fixed desire, to be noticed by the jungle people. But we do not notice them even when they throw nuts and fish on our heads. He had hardly spoken when a shower of nuts and twigs spattered down through the branches, and they could hear coughings and howlings and angry jumpings high up in the air among the thin branches. The monkey people are forbidden, said Baloo, forbidden to the jungle people. Remember, I, I, how was I to guess he would play with such dot? For, remember, for, forbidden, said Bagheera, but I still think Baloo should have warned thee against them. I, I, how was I to guess he would play with such dot? The monkey people. Four. A fresh shower came down on their heads and uh, the two trotted away, taking Mowgli with them. What Baloo had said about the monkeys was perfectly true. They belonged to the tree, peep, tr tree tops and as beasts very seldom look up. There was no occasion for the monkeys and the jungle people to cross each other's paths. But whenever they found a sick wolf or wounded tiger or bear, the monkeys would torment him and would throw sticks and nuts at any beast for fun and in the hope of being noticed. Then they would howl and shriek senseless songs and invite the jungle people to climb up their trees and fight them or would start furious battles over nothing among themselves and leave the dead monkeys where the jungle people could see them. They were always just going to have a leader and laws and customs of their own, but they never did because their memories would not hold over from day to day. And so they compromised things by making up a saying, what the bandalog think now the jungle will think later. And that comforted them 
a great deal. None of the beasts could reach them, but on the other hand, none of the beasts would notice them, and that was why they were so pleased when Mowgli came to play with them, and they heard how angry Baloo was. They never meant to do any more. The bandalog never mean anything at all. But one of them invented what seemed to him a brilliant idea, and he told all the others that Mowgli would be a useful person to keep in the tribe because he could weave sticks together for protection from the wind. So if they caught him, they could make him teach them. Of course, Mowgli as a woodcutter's child inherited all sorts of instincts and used to make little huts of fallen branches without thinking how he came to do it. And the monkey people watching in the trees considered his play most wonderful. This time they said they were really going to have a leader and become the wisest people in the jungle, so wise that everyone else would notice and envy them. Therefore they followed Baloo and Bagheera and Mowgli through the jungle very quietly till it was time for their midday nap, and Mowgli, who was very much ashamed of himself, slept between the panther and the bear, resolving to have no more to do with the monkey people. The next thing he remembered was feeling hands on his legs and arms, hard, strong little hands, and then a swish of branches in his face, and then he was staring down through the swaying buffs as Baloo woke the jungle with the deep cries and Bagheera bounded up the trunk with every tooth bared. The bundle log howled with triumph and scuffled away to the upper branches where Bagheera dared not follow, shouting, He has noticed us! Bagheera has noticed us! All the jungle people admire us for our skill and our cunning. Then they began their flight, and the flight of the monkey people through tree land is one of the things nobody can describe. They have their regular roads and crossroads, up hills and down hills, all laid out from 50 to 70 or a hundred feet above ground, and by these they can travel even at night if necessary. Two of the strongest monkeys caught Mowgli under the arms and swung off with him through the treetops twenty feet at a bound. Had they been alone, they could have gone twice as fast, but the boy's weight held them back. Sick and giddy, as Mowgli was, he could not help enjoying the wild rush. Through the glimpses of earth far down below frightened him, and the terrible cheek, uh, and the ch terrible check and jack at the end of the swing over nothing but empty air brought his heart between his teeth. His escort would rush him up a tree till he felt the thinnest topmost branches crackle and bend under them, and then with a cough and a whoop would fling themselves into the air outward and downward and bring up hanging by their hands or their feet to the lower limbs of the next tree. 
Sometimes he could see for miles and miles across the steel green jungle as a man on the top of a mast can see for miles across the sea. And then the branches and leaves would lash him across the face. And he and his two guards would be almost down to earth again. So bounding and crashing and whooping and yelling, the whole tribe of Banda logs swept along the tree roads with Mowgli their prisoner. For a time he was afraid of being dropped. Then he grew angry, but knew better than to struggle, and then he began to think. The first thing was to send back word to Baloo and Bagheera, for at the pace the monkeys were going, he knew his friends would be left far behind. It was useless to look down, for he could only see the top sides of the branches. So he stared upward and saw far away in the blue, chill the kite balancing and wheeling as he kept watch over the jungle, waiting for things to die. Chill saw that the monkeys were carrying something and dropped a few hundred yards to find out whether the load was good to eat. He whistled with surprise when he saw Mowgli being dragged up to a tree top and heard him give the kite call for We be of one blood, thou and I. The waves of the branches closed over the boy, but Chill balanced away to the next tree in time to see the little brown face come up again. Mark my trail, Mowgli shouted. Tell Baloo of the Sioni Peck and Bagheera of the Council Rock. In whose name, brother? Chill had never seen Mowgli before though, of course, he had heard of him. Mowgli, the frog, man cub, they call me. Mark my trail. The last words were shrieked as he was being swung through the air. But Chill nodded and rose up till he looked no big, bigger than a speck of dust. And there he hung, watching with his telescope eyes the swaying of the tree tops as Mowgli's escort rode along. They never go far, he said with a chuckle. They never do what they set out to do. Always pecking at new things are the bundle log. This time, if I have any eyesight, they have pecked down trouble for themselves, for Baloo is no fled fledgling, and Bagheera can, as I know, kill more than gods. So he rocked on his wings, his feet gathered up under him and waited. Meantime, Baloo and Bagheera were furious with rage and grief, Bagheera climbed as he had never climbed before, but the thin branches broke beneath his weight, and he slipped down, his claws full of bark. Why didst thou not <coughs> want the man cup? He wrote to poor Baloo, who had set off at a clumsy trot in the hope of overtaking the monkeys. What was the use of half stay slaying him with blows of thou didst not want him? Haste, oh haste, we, we may catch them yet, Baloo panted. At that speed it would not tire a wounded cow, teacher of the law, cub beater. A mile of that rolling to and fro would burst the open. 
Sit still and think. Make a plan. This is no time for chasing. They may drop him if we follow too close. A ruler, wool. They may have dropped him already, being tired of carrying him. Who can trust the bundle log? Put dead bats on my head. Give me black bones to eat. Roll me into the hives of the wild bees that I may be stunned to death and bury me with the hyena, for I am the most miserable of bears. Arulala, wow, boa. <coughs> oh, Mowgli, Mowgli. Why did I not warn thee against the monkey folk? instead of breaking thy head. Now perhaps I may have knocked the day's lesson out of his mind, and he will be alone in the jungle without the master words. Baloo clasped his paws over his ears and rolled to and fro moaning. At least he gave me all the words correctly a little time ago, said Bagheera, impatiently. Baloo, thou hast neither memory nor respect. What would the jungle think of I, the black panther, curled myself up like Iki, the porcupine, and howled? What do I care what the jungle thinks? He may be dead by now, unless and until they drop him from the branches in spot or kill him out of idleness. I have no fear for the ma man cub. He is wise and well taught, and above all he has the eyes that make the jungle people afraid. But, and it is a great evil, he is in the power of the bundalog, and they, because they live in trees, have no fear of any of our people. Bagheera licked one forepaw thoughtfully. Fool that I am, oh, fat brown root digging fool that I am, said Baloo, uncurling himself with a jack. It is true what Hathi, the wild elephant, says to each his own fear, and they, the bundle log, fear Ka, the rock snake. He can climb as well as they can. He steals the young monkeys in the night. The whisper of his name makes their wicked tails cold. Let us go to Ka. What will he do for us? He is not of our tribe, being footless and with most evil eyes, said Bagheera. He is very old and very cunning. Above all, he is always hungry, said Baloo hopefully. Promise him many goats. He sleeps for a full month after he has once eaten. He may be asleep now, and even were he awake, what if he would rather kill his own goats? Bagheera, who did not know much about Ka, was naturally suspicious. Then in that case, thou and I together, old hunter, might take him see reason. Here Baloo rubbed his faded brown shoulder against the panther, and they went off to look for Ka, the rock python. They found him stretched out on a warm ledge in the afternoon sun, admiring his uh, beautiful new coat for he had been in retirement for the last ten days, chanting his skin and uh, changing his skin, and now he was very splendid, daring, uh, darting his big uh, blunt nose, the head along the ground and uh, to, twisting the thirty feet of his body into fantastic knots and curves. 
and uh, licking his lips as he thought of his dinner to come. He has not eaten, said Baloo with a grunt of relief. As soon as he saw, as soon as he saw the beautiful mottled brown and yellow jacket. Be careful, Bagheera, he is always a little blind after he has changed his skin and very quick to strike. Ka was not a poison snake. In fact, he rather despised the poison snakes as cowards. But his strength lay in his hug, and when he had once lapped his huge coils round anybody, there was no more to be said. Good hunting, cried Baloo, sitting up on his haunches. Like all snakes of his breed, Ka was rather deaf and his and did not hear the call at first. Then he curled up ready for any accident, he his head lowered. Good hunting for us all, he answered. Oh ho, Baloo, what dost thou do here? Good hunting, Bagheera. One of us at least needs food. Is there any news of game afoot? I do now. A do now or even a young buck? I am as empty as a dried well. We are hunting, said Baloo carelessly. He knew that you must not hurry, Ka. He is too big. Give me permission to come with you, said Ka. A blow more or less is nothing to thee, Bagheera or Baloo. But I, I have no, I have to wait and wait for days in a wood path and climb half a night on the mere chance of a young ape. Pass how. The branches are not what they were when I was young. Rotten twigs and dry buffs are they all. Maybe thy great weight has something to do with the matter, said Baloo. I am a fair lens, a fair lens, said Ka with a little pride. But for all that, it is the fault of this new-grown timber. I came very near to falling on my last hunt, very near indeed, and the noise of my sleeping, for my tail was not tight wrapped round the tree, waked the bundle log, and they called me most evil names. Footless, yellow, Earthworm, said Bagheera under his whiskers, as though he were trying to remember something. Sss. Have they ever called me that? said Ka. Something of that kind, it was that they shouted to us last moon, but we never noticed them. They will say anything. Even that thou hast lost all thy teeth, and will, wilt not face anything bigger than a kid, because they are indeed shameless, these bandalogs, because thou art afraid of the he goat's horns. Bagheera went on sweetly. Now a snake, especially a wary old python like Ka, very seldom shows that he is angry, but Baloo and Bagheera could see the big swallowing muscles on either side of Ka's throat ripple and bulge. The bandalog have shifted their grounds, he said quietly. When I came up into the sun today, I heard them whooping among the treetops. It, it is the bundle log that we follow now, said Baloo, but the words stuck in his throat, for that was the first time in his memory that one of the jungle people 
had owned to being interested in the doings of the monkeys. Beyond doubt, then it is to no small thing that takes two such hunters, leaders in their own jungle, I am certain, on the trail of the bandalog, Carl replied cautiously as he swelled his curiosity. Indeed, Baloo began, I am no more than the old and uh, sometimes very foolish teacher of the laws uh, to the Sioni wolf cubs and Bagheera here. Is Bagheera, said the black panther, and his jaws shut with a snap, for he did not believe in being humble. The trouble is this car. Those nut stealers and pickers of palm leaves have stolen away our man cub, of whom thou hast perhaps heard. I heard some news from Iki. His uh, quills make him presumptuous of a man thing that was entered into a wolf pack, but I did not believe. Iki is full of stories half heard and very badly told. But it is true. He is, a, he is such a man cup as never was, said Baloo. The best and wisest and uh, boldest of man cups. My own pupil, who shall make the name of Baloo famous through all the jungles. And besides, I, we, Love him, Ka, said Ka, shaking his head to and fro. I also have known what love is. There are tales I could tell that that need a clear night when we are all well fed to praise properly, said Bagheera quickly. Our man cup is in the hands of the bandalog now. And we know that of all the jungle people, they fear Ka alone. They fear me alone. They have good reason, said Ka, chattering, foolish, vain. Vain, foolish and chattering are the monkeys. But a man thing in their hands is in no good luck. They grow tired of the nuts they pick and throw them down. They carry a branch half a day, meaning to do great things with it, and then they snap it in two. That man thing is not to be envied. They called me also yellow fish, was it not? Warm, warm, earth warm, said Bagheera, as well as other things which I cannot now say for shame. We must remind them to speak well of their master. Ash, we must help their wandering memories. Now, whither went they with the cub? The jungle alone knows. Toward the sunset, I believe, said Baloo. We had thought that thou wouldst know, Ka. I? How? I take them when they come in my way, but I do not hunt the bandalog or frogs or green scum or a water hole for that matter. Up, 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 up! Hello! Hello, hello! Look up, Baloo, at the Sioni wolf pack! Baloo looked up to see where the voice came from, and there was chill, the kite sweeping down with the sun shining on the upturned flanks of his wings. It was near Chill's bedtime, but he had ranged all over the jungle looking for the bear and his mist and had missed him in the thick foliage. What is it? said Baloo. I have seen Mowgli among the bundalog. He bade me tell you I watched 
the bundle log have taken him beyond the river to the monkey city to the cold layers. They may stay there for a night, or ten nights, or an hour. I have told the bats to watch through the dark time. That is my message. Good hunting, all you below. Full gorge and a deep sleep to you, chill, cried Bagheera. I remember thee in my next kill and put aside the head for thee alone, O oh best of kites. It is nothing, it is nothing. The boy held the master word. I could have done no less. And Chill circled up again in his roots, roost. He has not forgotten to use his tongue, said Baloo, with a chuckle of pride. To think of one so young remembering the master word for the birds too while he was being pulled across trees. It was most firmly driven into him, said Bagheera, but I am proud of him, and now we must go to the cold lairs. They all knew where that place was, but few of the jungle people ever went there because what they called the cold lairs was an old deserted city, lost and buried in the jungle, and beasts seldom use a place that men have once used. The wild boar will, but the hunting tribes do not. Besides, the monkeys lived there as much as they could be saved to live anywhere, and no self-respecting animal would come within eyeshot of it except in times of drought, uh, when the half-ruined tanks and reservoirs held a little water. It is half a night's journey at full speed, said Bagheera, and Baloo looked very serious. I will go as fast as I can, he said anxiously. We dare not wait for thee. Follow, Baloo. We must go on the quick foot, Ka and I. Feet or no feet, I can keep abreast of all thy hour said Ka shortly. Baloo made one effort to hurry but had to sit down panting, and so they left him to come on later while Bagheera hurried forward at the quick panther canter. Ka said nothing but strive as Bagheera might. The huge rock python held level with him. When they came to a hill stream, Bagheera gained because he bounded across while Ka swam, his head and two feet of his neck clearing the water, but on level ground Ka made up the distance. By the broken lock that freed me, said Bagheera, when twilight had fallen, thou art no slow goer. I am hungry, said Ka. Besides, they called me speckled frog. Warm, earth warm, and yellow to boot. <coughs> oh, one, let us go on. And Ka seemed to pour himself along the ground, finding the shortest road with his steady eyes and keeping to it. In the cold layers, the monkey people were not thinking of Mowgli's friends at all. They had brought the boy to the lost city and were very pleased with themselves for the time. Mowgli had never seen an Indian city before, and though this was almost a heap of ruins, it seemed very wonderful and splendid. Some king had built it long ago on a little hill. You could still trace the stone uh, causeways that led up to the ruined gates where the last splinters of wood hung to the worn, rusted uh, hinges. 
trees had grown into and out of the walls. The battlements were tumbled down and decayed, and wild creepers hung out of the windows of the towers of the, on the walls in bushy hanging clumps. A great roofless palace crowned the hill, and the marble of the courtyards and the fountains was split and stained with red and green, and the very cobblestones in the courtyard where the king's elephants used to live had been uh, thrust up and apart by gray grasses and young trees. From the palace you could see the rows and rows of roofless houses that made up the city looking like empty honeycombs filled with blackness. The shapeless block of stone that had been an idol in the square where four roads met, the pits and dimples at uh, street corners where the public wells once stood, and uh, the shattered dooms of temples with wild figs sprouting on their sides. The monkeys called the place their city and pretended to despise the jungle people because they lived in the forest, and yet they never knew what the buildings were made for nor how to use them. They would sit in circles on the hall of the king's council chamber and scratch for fleas and pretend to be men. Or they would run in and out of the roofless houses and collect pieces of plaster and old bricks in a corner and forget where they had hidden them and fight and cry in scuffling crowds, and then break off to play up and down the terraces of the king's garden, where they would shake the rose trees and the oranges in sport to see the fruit and flowers fall. They explored all the passages and dark tunnels in the palace and the hundreds of little dark rooms but they never remembered what they had seen and what they had not. And so drifted about in ones and twos or crowds, telling each other that they were doing as men did. They drank at the tanks and made the water all muddy, and then they fought over it, and then they would all rush together in mobs and shout. There is no one in the jungle so wise and good and clever and strong and gentle as the bundle log. Then all would begin again till they grew tired of the city and went back to the tree tops, hoping the jungle people would notice them. Mowgli, who had been trained under the law of the jungle, did not like or understand this kind of life. The monkeys dragged him into the cold lairs late in the afternoon, and instead of going to sleep, as Mowgli would have done after a long journey, they joined hands and danced about and sang their foolish songs. One of the monkeys made a speech and told his companions that Mowgli's capture marked a new thing in the history of the Bandalog, for Mowgli was going to show them how to weave sticks and canes together as a protection against rain and cold. Mowgli picked up some creepers and began to walk them in and out, and the monkeys tried to imitate. But in a very few minutes they lost interest and began to pull their friends' tails 
or jumped up and down on all fours, coughing. I wish to eat, said Mowgli. I am a stranger in this part of the jungle. Bring me food or give me leave to hunt here. Twenty or thirty monkeys bounded away to bring him nuts and wild pawpaws. But they fell to fighting on the road, and it was too much trouble to go back with what was left of the fruit. Mowgli was sore and angry as well as hungry, and he roamed through the empty city, giving the stranger's hunting call from time to time, but no one answered him. And Mowgli felt that he had reached a very bad place indeed. All that Baloo has said about the bundalog is true, he thought to himself. They have no law, no hunting law, and no leaders, nothing but foolish words and little picking thievish hands, so if I am starved or killed here, it will be all my own fault. But I must try to return to my own jungle. Baloo will surely beat me, but that is better than chasing silly rose leaves with the bundle logs. No sooner had he walked to the city wall than the monkeys pulled him back, telling him that he did not know how happy he was, and pinching him to make him grateful. He set his teeth and said nothing, but went with the shouting monkeys to a terrace above the red sandstone reservoirs that were half full of rainwater. There was a ruined summer house of white marble in the center of the terrace, built for queens dead a hundred years ago. The doomed roof had half fallen in and blocked up the underground passage from the palace by which the queens used to enter, but the walls were made of screens of marble uh, tracery beautiful milk-white firework set with agates and uh, con cornelians and jasper and uh, lapis lazuli and uh, as the moon came up behind the hill it shone through the open walk casting shadows on the ground like black velvet uh, embroidery so sleepy and hungry as he was, Mowgli could not help laughing when the bundle logs uh, began twenty at a time to tell him how great and wise and strong and gentle they were, and how foolish he was to wish to leave them. We are great, we are free, we are wonderful, we are the most wonderful people in all the jungle. We all say so, and so it must be true, they shouted. Now, as you are a new listener and can carry our words back to the jungle people so that they may notice us in future, we will tell you all about our most excellent selves. Mowgli made no objection, and the monkeys gathered by hundreds and hundreds on the terrace to listen to their own speakers singing the praises of the log. And whenever a speaker stopped for want of breath, they would all shout together, This is true, we all say so. Mowgli nodded and blinked and said, Yes when they asked him a question, and his head spun with the nose, noise. Tabak with the jackal must have beaten all the people, he said to himself, and now they have the madness 
Certainly this is Divani, the madness. Do they never go to sleep? Now there is a cloud coming to cover that moon. If it were only a big enough cloud, I might try to run away in the darkness, but I am tired. That same cloud was being watched by two good friends in the ruined uh, ditch below the city wall. Obagira and Ka, knowing well how dangerous the monkey people were in large numbers, did not wish to run any risks. The monkeys never fight unless they are a hundred to one, and few in the jungle care for those odds. I will go to the wisest uh, to the west wall, Ka whispered, and come down swiftly with the slope of the ground in my favor. They will not throw themselves upon my back and their hundreds, but I know it said Bagheera, would that Baloo were here, but we must do what we can. When that cloud covers the moon, I shall go to the terrace. They hold some sort of council there over the boy. Good hunting, said God grimly, and glided away to the west wall. That happened to be the least ruined of any. And the big snake was delayed a while before he could find a way up the stones. The cloud hid the moon, and as Mowgli wondered what would come next, he heard Bagheera's light feet on the terrace. The black panther... <coughs> had raised up the slope almost without a sound and was striking. He knew better than to waste time in biting right and left among the monkeys who were seated round Mowgli in circles fifty and sixty deep. There was a howl of fright and rage, and then as Bagheera tripped on the rolling Kicking bodies beneath him, a monkey shouted, There is only one here, kill him, kill. <coughs> A scuffling mass of monkeys biting, scratching, tearing and pu pulling closed over Bagheera, while five or six laid hold on Mowgli, dragged him up the wall of the summer house and pushed him through the hole of the broken doom. A man trained boy would have been badly bruised, for the fall was a good fifteen feet, but Mowgli fell as Baloo had taught him to tail to uh, taught him to fall and landed on his feet. Stay there, shouted the monkeys till we have killed thy friends, and later we will play with thee, if the poison people leave thee alive. We be of one blood, ye and I, said Mowgli, quickly giving the snake's call. He could hear rustling and hissing in the rubbish of all round him, and gave the call a second time to make sure. Even so, down hoods all, said half a dozen low voices. Every ruin in India becomes sooner or later a dwelling place of snakes, and the old summer house was alive with cobras. Stand still, little brother, for thy feet may do us harm. Mowgli stood as quietly as he could, peering through the open walk, and uh, listening to the furious din of the fight round the Black Panther, the yells and chattering, the scufflings, and Bagheera's deep hoarse cough as he backed and bucked and uh, twisted and plunged under the hips of his enemies. 
For the first time since he was born, Bagheera was fighting for his life. Baloo must be at hand. Bagheera would not have come alone, Mowgli thought, and then he called aloud. To the tank, Bagheera, roll to the water tank, roll and plunge, get to the water. Bagheera heard and the cry that um, told him Mowgli was safe gave him new courage. He walked his way desperately inch by inch straight for the reservoirs hitting in silence. Then from the ruined wall nearest the jungle rose up the rumbling water shout of Baloo. The wild bear had done his best, but he could not come before. Bagheera, he shouted, I am here, I climb, I haste. Abo, the stones slip under my feet, wait my coming, O oh, most infamous bandalog. He painted up the terrace uh, only to disappear to the head in a wave of monkeys, but he threw himself uh, squarely on his uh, conscious and uh, spreading out his four paws, hugged as many as he could hold, and then began to hit with a regular bat, 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 like the flapping strokes of a pedal wheel. A crash and a splash told Mowgli that Bagheera had fought his way to the tank where the monkeys could not follow. The panther lay gasping for breath. His head just out of water, while the monkeys stood three deep on the red steps, dancing up and down with rage, really to spring upon him from all sides if he came out to help Baloo. It was then that Bagheera lifted up his uh, uh, dripping chin and in despair gave the snake call, snake's call for protection. We be of one blood, ye and I. For he believed that Ka had turned tail at the last minute. Even Baloo, half smothered under the monkeys on the edge of the terrace, could not help chuckling as he heard the black panther asking for help. Ka had only just walked his way over the west wall, landing with a wrench that uh, dislodged a coping stone into the ditch. He had no intention of losing any advantage of the ground, and coiled and uncoiled himself once or twice to be sure that every foot of his long body was in working order. All that while the fight with Baloo went on, and the monkeys yield in the tank around Bagheera, and Meng the bat flying to and fro carried the news of the great battle over the jungle, till even Hathi the wild elephant trumpeted, and far away scattered bands of the monkey folk woke and came leaping along the tree roads to help the comrades in the cold lairs. And the noise of the fight rose all the day birds for miles round. Then Ka came straight, quickly, and anxious to kill. The fighting strength of a python is in the driving blow of his head backed by all the strength and weight of his body. If you can imagine a lance or a battering ram or a hammer weighing nearly half a ton driven by a cool, quiet mind lying in, uh, living in the handle of it, you can roughly imagine what cow was like when he fought. A python four or five feet long can knock a man down if he hits him fairly in the chest. 
and car was thirty feet long, as you know. His first stroke was delivered into the heart of the crowd round Balu. Was sent home with shut mouth in silence. And there was no need of a second. The monkeys scattered with cries of Ka! It is Ka! Run! Run! Generations of monkeys had been scared into good behavior by the stories the elders told them of Ka, the night thief who could sleep along the branches as quietly as moss grows and steal away the strongest monkey that ever lived. Of old Ka, who could make himself look so like a dead branch or a rotten stump that the wisest were deceived till the branch caught them. Ka was everything that the monkeys feared in the jungle for none of them knew the limits of his power. None of them could look him in the face, and none had ever come alive out of his hug. And so they ran stammering with terror to the walls and the roofs of the houses, and Baloo drew a deep breath of relief. His fur was much thicker than Bagheera's, but he had suffered sorely in the fight. Then Ka opened his mouth for the first time and spoke one long hissing word, and the faraway monkeys hurrying to the defense of the cold lairs stayed where they were, covering till the loaded branches bent and crackled under them. The monkeys on the walls and the empty houses stopped their cries, and in stillness that fell upon the city, Mowgli heard Bagheera shaking his wet sides as he came up from the tank. Then the clamor broke out again. The monkeys leaped higher up the walls. They clung round the necks of the big stone idols and shrieked as they skipped along the battlements. While Mowgli, dancing in the summer house, put his eyes to the screen work and hooted owl fashion between his front teeth to show his derision and contempt. Get the man cub out of the trap. I can do no more, Bagheera grasped. Uh, let us take the man cub and go. They may attack again. They will not move till I order them. Stay, you. So, Ka hissed and the city was silent once more. I could not come before, brother, but I think I heard thee call. This was to Bagheera. I, I may come, I may have cried out in the battle, Bagheera answered. Balu, art thou here, uh, hurt? I am not sure that they have not pulled me into a hundred little bearlings said Baloo gravely, shaking one leg after the other. Wow, I'm so ka, we owe thee, I think, our lives, Bagheera and I. No matter, where is the mo mo where is the manling? Here, in a trap, I cannot climb out, cried Mowgli. The curve of the broken doom was above his head. Take him away. He dances like Mao the peacock. He will crush our young, said the cobras inside. Ha, huh, said Ka with a chuckle. He has friends everywhere, this manling. Stand back, manling, and hide you, O poison people. I break down the wall. 
car looked carefully till he found a discolored uh, crack in the marble tracery uh, showing a weak spot, made two or three light taps with his head to get the distance, and then lifting up his feet of his body cleared of the ground, sent, uh, uh, sent home half a dozen full power, smashing blown blows nose first. The screen walk broke and fell away in a cloud of dust and rubbish and Mowgli leaped through the opening and flung himself between Baloo and Bagheera, an arm round each big neck. Art thou hurt? said Baloo, hugging him softly. I am so hungry and not a little bruised, but oh, they have handled ye grievously. My brothers, ye bleed. Others also, said Bagheera, licking his lips and looking at the monkey dead on the terrace and round the tank. It is nothing, it is nothing, if thou art safe, O oh my pride of all little frogs, whimpered Baloof. Of that we shall judge later said Bagheera in a dry voice that Mowgli did not at all like. But here is Ka, to whom we owe the battle, and thou owest thy life. Thank him according to our custom, Mowgli. Mowgli turned and saw the great python's head swaying a foot above his own. So this is the mangling, said Ka. Very soft is his skin, and he is not so unlike the bundle log. Have a care, manling, that I do not mistake thee for a monkey some twilight when I have newly changed my coat. We be of one blood, though, and I, Mowgli answered, I take my life from thee tonight, my kill shall be thy kill, if ever thou art hungry, O Ka. All thanks, little brother, said Ka, though his eyes twinkled. And what may so bold a hunter kill? I ask that I may follow when next he goes abroad. I kill nothing, I am too little, but I drive goats toward such as can use them <coughs> when they, though art empty, come to me and I see if I speak the truth. I have some skill in this. He held out his hands, and if ever thou art in a trap, I may pay the debt which I owe to thee, to Bagheera and to Baloo here. Good hunting to you all, my masters. Well said, growled Baloo, for Mowgli had returned things very prettily. <coughs> <coughs> the peasant dropped his head lightly for a minute on Mowgli's shoulder. A brave heart and a courteous tongue, said he. They shall carry thee far through the jungle, manling. But now go hence quickly with thy friends. Go and sleep, for the moon sets, and what follows it is not well that thou should see. The moon was sinking behind the hills, and the lines of trembling monkeys huddled together on the walls and battlements looked like ragged, shaky fringes of pinks. Baloo went down to the tank for a drink, and Bagheera began to put his fur in order as Ka glided out into the center of the terrace and brought his jaws together with a ringing snap that drew all the monkey's eyes open upon him. The moon sets, he said. 
Is there yet light to see? From the walls came a moan like the wind in the treetops. We see, O oh kite. Good. Begins now the dance, the dance of the hunter of Ka. Sit still and watch. He turned twice or thrice in a big circle, weaving his head from right to left. Then he began making loops and figures of eight with his body and soft oozy triangles that melted into squares and five-sided figures and coiled mounds never resting, never hurrying and never stopping his low humming song. It grew darker and darker till at last the dragon shifting coils disappeared but they could hear the rustle of the scales. Baloo and Bagheera stood still at a stone, growing in their throats, their neck hair bristling, and Mowgli watched and wondered. Bandalog, said the voice of Ka at last, can ye stiff foot or hand without my order? Speak. Without thy order, we cannot see foot or hand or car. Good, come all one pace closer to me. The lines of the monkey swayed forward helplessly, and Baloo and Bagheera took one step, uh, one stiff step forward with them. Closer, hissed car, and they all moved again. Mowgli laid his hands on Baloo and Bagheera to get them away, and the two great beasts started as though they had been waked from a dream. Keep thy hand on my shoulder, Bagheera whispered. Keep it there, or I must go back, must go back to Ka. Ah. It is only old Ka making circles on the dust, said Mowgli. Let us go. And the three slipped off through a gap in the walls to the jungle. Woof, said Baloo, when he stood under the steel trees again. Never more will I make an ally of Ka. And he shook himself all over. He knows more than we, said Bagheera, trembling. In a little time, had I stayed, I should have walked down his throat. Many will walk by that road before the moon rises again, said Baloo. He will have good hunting after his own fashion. But what was the meaning of it all, said Mowgli, who did not know anything of a Pithian's powers of fascination. I saw no more than a big snake making foolish circles till the dark come, dark came, and his nose was also, ho, ho. Mowgli, said Bagheera angrily, his nose was so on thy account, as my ears and sides and paws and Baloo's neck and shoulders are beaten on thy account, neither Baloo nor Bagheera will be able to hunt with pleasure for many days. It is nothing, said Baloo. We have the man cub again. True, but he has cost us heavily in time, which might have been spent in good hunting, in wounds, in hair. I am half plucked along my back, and uh, last of all an honor. For remember, Mowgli, I, who am the Black Panther, was forced to call upon Ka for protection, and Baloo and I were both made stupid as uh, little birds by the hung uh, dance. All this man cup came of thy playing with the bundle locks. True, it is true, said Mowgli sorrowfully. 
I am an evil man cub, and my stomach is sad in me. Mm. What says the law of the jungle, Baloo? Baloo did not wish to bring Mowgli into any more trouble, but he could not temper with the law, so he mumbled. Sorrow never stays punishment. But remember, Bagheera, he is very little. I will remember, but he has done mischief, and blows must be dealt now. Mowgli, has thou anything to say? Nothing. I did wrong. Baloo, and thou are wounded, it is just. Bagheera gave him half a dozen love taps. From a panther's point of view, they would hardly have waked one of his own cubs. But for a seven-year-old boy, they amounted to as severe a beating as you could wish to avoid. When it was all over, Mowgli sneezed and picked himself up without a word. Now, said Bagheera, jump on my back, little brother, and I will go home. One of the beauties of jungle law is that punishment settles all scores. There is no nagging afterward. Mowgli laid his head down on Bagheera's back and slept so deeply that he never waked when he was put down by Mother Wolf's side in the home cave. The end of part three.